Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. This is our year in review edition of Able and On Air. Uh, we would like to say thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnerships uh, with um, Higher Ability Vermont, the uh, Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many others. Uh, we would like to thank them and thank our sponsors for uh, a wonderful 2022, and we look forward to 2023. Um, let us begin um, by uh, uh, showing you some clips from 2022. Um, we begin with um, this very important fact. It's extremely important for Vermonters as well as people of the world and uh, globally and everybody who is challenged to have appropriate housing uh, for people with special needs. Let's take a look at a clip from uh, Zachary Zachariah. Zachariah, thank you. From Zachariah Watson, uh, Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity of Central Vermont. Let's take a look at this clip. For those who don't know, what are the missions and goals of Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity? Thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, so Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity is a uh, 501c3, a, it's a Christian ecumenical nonprofit and uh, we build affordable housing uh, for home ownership. So we have a couple programs. We do home repairs for, um, we help with home access to help people stay in their home as they age. And we also build homes and rehabilitate homes uh, and work with income sensitive Vermonters in central Vermont to provide them with a home that is theirs uh, with an affordable mortgage. Okay. Um, as a Christian organization, our mission is to, is, um, is spreading the love of God and, and uh, by providing shelter for those who need it. And our uh, vision is creating a world where everyone has a place to live. And Watson, Senator. Okay, let's take a look um, at Ann Watson, who is running 
for Senator. Let's take a look at this clip on Abled and On Air. Uh, tell us uh, more. You're going to be running for Senator. And uh, let's start there. Why, um, why the Washington District? Why did you decide to expand and become senator or, or wanting to become senator? Well, yeah. So, uh, so the Washington County District has uh, three senators, mm -hmm. and one of them recently stepped down, um, Anthony Polina. And I um, have been thinking about making the the jump to working at the state level, you know, in the state legislature. And I, you know, just knowing that Anthony was uh, stepping down, uh, it seemed like the right moment, seemed like the, the right opportunity. And especially because I, um, I'm really passionate about uh, a lot of topics, one of them being uh, climate action. I, um, you know, there, I've been able to make a lot of progress with the city of Montpelier. Uh, but we need bigger change, and to, to, in order to make bigger change on uh, the issue of climate, I, I need a, a, a different seat. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to be uh, putting my name in for um, the Washington Senate District. Three, two, one. Go ahead. Gun violence. Okay. It's extremely important um, to deal with gun violence um, in a way um, that we've never dealt with it before. Um, we talk about gun violence and people with special needs on Able de Air with Senator Rebecca Bazant uh, of, um, of Vermont. Let's take a look at this clip of her on Able and on Air. Let's take a look at this. And they're in the news as of late, all around the world, um, there's been issues of school shootings, there's been issues of many situations with um, guns and, mm -hmm. and ghost guns and new things. Um, can you explain a little bit about, because um, I know that Governor Scott had passed a gun law. Can you explain a little bit about that and then we can go from there? Oh, happy to. Um, and thank you so much for, for having me. And for folks who might be watching, I'm the president pro tem of the Senate here uh, in Montpelier in the, um, in the state house, but I represent Wyndham County in the southern part of the state. And I mention that because the organizer, the founder of one of our best gun safety uh, prevention programs here in Vermont. Gun Sense Vermont is actually from my home county. Her name was Ann, well, is Ann Braden. Uh, she no longer heads the organization Gun Sense Vermont, but she was really the one um, after the Sandy Hook massacre, the school, she was originally from Sandy Hook. And also Columbine, too. Ex exactly. And so um, she really was instrumental in uh, pushing all of us around the state to think more carefully about um, gun violence prevention. And so this most recent bill comes after a series of other bills that we've worked on in the last few sessions. And it, it's very important um, for proper social work services uh, anywhere in the world. Let's take a look at um, uh, recently we've had our uh, nephew, um, David Wecker, talking about um, social work in Israel. Let's take a look at this clip. David Wecker, uh, social worker from Israel. Welcome yes. back uh, to Able Then On Air, because you were on before. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. Okay. Um, for those that don't know, uh, since you are a social worker in Israel, uh, what is the difference between, in your opinion, um, or there are differences obviously, what's the difference of being a social worker in Israel and the United States? Are there any differences within uh, yeah. practicum, you know, helping people, being a social worker? Yeah, or, I didn't know so much about the system here in the United States, but what I can say about Israel and where I see the difference is like in Israel, the, it's, a, it's a welfare society, 
like they taking care of all the citizens from when they start. They have a, a free health insurance to all the citizens, and and then you grow up in a welfare society. Of course, the education is is uh, free. And well, what is meant by a welfare society in like this case? You have a lot of rights from the time that you your your birth. And the, the, at the end of your life, when you became old and you need some help, the, the state take care of all, all the things that you need. Go home. Okay. Teddy, Teddy was that. Okay. It's extremely important for people to have um, school food and um, important nutrition when it comes to school nutrition. Let's listen in to this clip from Teddy Wazaza from uh, Central Vermont um, School Food uh, um, or a, a school food organization. Let's take a look at this clip. So, explain the missions and goals of your agency and what you do um, to give uh, children and young adults uh, better nutrition in schools. Absolutely. So Hunger Free Vermont is an anti-hunger and anti-poverty organization. Uh, so we work to do two main things. We advocate for changes that we think that need to be made to uh, federal and state programs. Uh, and we provide assistance to individuals, organizations, schools uh, to access federal and state programs uh, and get so we will help uh, apply for grants. We will help you with technical assistance, with filling out all of the very complicated federal paperwork that schools have to fill out. Uh, but you said federal paperwork. Yep, yeah, federal or state paperwork. I just think the federal stuff is typically more complicated <laughs> than, the, than the state stuff. Mm. Um, but we help with all of those things. And I specifically work on the Universal School Meals Campaign, uh, which is our campaign to get a law passed to make sure that Every student in every school across Vermont has access to breakfast and lunch every day at no cost to them or their families. By the way, we would like to say a special thank you to Chief Pete, Chief um, Pete of the Montpelier Police Department. Uh, we wish him well on his new job um, in Kansas. Um, Let's take a look at this clip when Chief Pete was on Able Dinner on Air with Washington County Mental Health. Again, we wish him all the best uh, in his new position in uh, Kansas, uh, going there to work at the police department. But let's take a look at this clip um, in terms of Chief Pete and Washington County Mental Health. Uh, it, well, first and foremost, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Um, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I am, yeah, I'm, I'm new to Montpelier for the most part. I've been here since, or my family and I have been here for coming on two years. It'll be two years uh, in June. And uh, I was born and raised on the south side of the city of Chicago. Um, went off to the military, joined the Air Force, uh, aircraft maintenance, and then I switched over to be a federal agent with the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Um, and then from there, I joined the Chicago Police Department, worked in the Chicago Inspector General's office, worked uh, as Know Your Client Anti-Money Laundering at J.P. Morgan Private Bank. Um, and, then, um, uh, and then I became the chief of police in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and then uh, I started my gig here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. COVID and special needs. Okay. Let's also take a look at this clip um, from... Joanne Siegel from the, uh, from the um, John F. Kennedy Center in the Bronx and Dr. Karen Banuk of, um, the, of Einstein Hospital. Uh, they were on a Zoom broadcast talking about a COVID uh, program and dealing with people with special needs in New York and beyond. Let's take a look at this clip. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, well, can you tell us a lot about the grant and why and how it got started and the importance of it? 
And maybe I'll start with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you might say a little over a year ago, I looked around and I saw that there was likely a need for vaccine education for people with developmental disabilities. Um, I actually reached out to our some of our clinicians and our leadership and particularly um, you know, in different languages to, to get information out there. And um, I think people thought that maybe I was getting a little bit ahead of the curve. The vaccines were just starting to roll out and said, hold off. Um, at the same time, I contacted the New York State Developmental Disabilities uh, Planning Council and um, put forth the idea of a vaccine education project aimed at developing uh, different media initiatives and getting out science-based information. And um, they agreed that it was a good idea. <laughs> On my turn. Now, let's listen in and um, take a look at Washington County Mental Health. Um, we've had Gary Gordon on several times in the past and also um, in recent uh, times um, talking about crisis training and emergency mental health with Washington County Mental Health, one of our sponsors on Able Den On Air. Let's take a look and listen in. All right. Excellent service to all of our clients, to all of our population in Washington County and the three towns in Orange County that we serve. Um, our mission is to be inclusive, to provide these services without prejudice or discrimination to anyone in our county, mm -hmm. no matter what the situation is. Um, our doors are always open, mm -hmm. you know, and we welcome people to come into our services and we work very diligently to provide those services. Um, we provide a range of services. Uh, we have our developmental services division. We have our children, youth, and family services division. We have our um, community support program division, and we have our intensive care services division, and we're all out there working tirelessly to provide services to our clientele um, in all of the appropriate and supportive ways you know, being sensitive to uh, everyone's situation, wherever they are in their life at the time. I mean, I could go into a lot of buzzwords and things like that, but I think the bottom line is, is that we're here to serve the mental health needs of the population of Washington and Orange Counties. Back in 2015, um, Abel Dinan there came back to television and started here in Central Vermont. But I've also been a journalist for 30 years. But let's take a look at um, when uh, the Self-Advocacy Association of Vermont uh, and Max Barrows discuss the Self-Advocacy Association of Vermont on Able Den On Air. Let's listen in and take a look at that clip. A self-advocate. When we define self-advocate, um, it is somebody who speaks up for themselves, uh, for their needs and their wants and their goals in life, a person with a disability um, in particular. Um, it goes and coincides with, uh, it goes with the term self-advocacy. And what we mean by self-advocacy is it's not a program, it's a movement. <clears throat> and it's the kind of movement where we <clears throat> speak up for ourselves and we encourage other individuals <clears throat> with disabilities to um, speak up and uh, take charge of their lives and take responsibility uh, of themselves and also speak up for others. It is an, it's a <clears throat> national, statewide, and also <clears throat> international movement that has been happening for years. And the work we do is based off of that in a human rights uh, perspective. Okay. Uh, now let's um, discuss for, um, even though this show is about a half an hour, let's, uh, um, there have been some very prominent things uh, on some things that's been happening 
with people with special needs um, throughout the year. And uh, let's look up some prominent um, thing, you know, in terms of disability news. Um, in terms of the situation with um, Social Security, um, for anyone in terms of this year, Social Security for people with special needs, according to Disability Scoop, will be going up 8.7%. So if you get SSI or SSDI, be prepared for a, for a $170 jump in your Social Security check. Um, for more information on that, you can go to www.disabilityscoop.com. And also, Disability Scoop is the primary source of news and information, besides Abled and On Air, uh, for news, more news and information um, for people with special needs. So um, there's education, there's uh news about autism, health and behavior, so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, according to Disability Scoop... Dr. Making more, more accessible on the airlines. Yes. As a matter of fact, for people with special needs, um, on disabilityscoop.com, um, let's take a look at some news really quick. Um, spending on adults with disabilities differs from, uh, by race and place. Um, which kind of deals with politics. Um, one state system for ensuring that adults with developmental disabilities get crucial services and are plagued with uh, the stark differences in spending by race, ethnicity, and where people live, advocates say. This is according to an article that was dated November 1st, 2022. So, um, and then also, according to Disability Scoop, um, advocates uh, work to ensure that every vote counts. If you are voting on voting day, which is November 8th, um, you can go, if you're here in Vermont, you can go to City Hall and uh, they can help you vote if you need a larger print uh, ballot. You can ask for help there. But uh, um, according to a Disability Scoop, um, people with disabilities can vote easier uh, just by asking for more services. So for more information on that, you can go to www disabilityscoop.com and also look up uh, many uh, different things when it comes to voting. Um, this is according to the, the Baltimore Sun. Um, every vote counts. There was an article done there. Uh, again, for more information on people with special needs and um, news and people with special needs, uh, you can go to www disabilityscoop.com but just know that everyone here can tune in to Abled In On Air at Vermont's premier uh, program for people with special needs in Vermont and beyond. Uh, we would like to extremely uh, say a special thank you to uh, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services and many other people in 2000, in 2000 22 that have helped, especially um, this show is in association with Orca Media. We would like to thank Orca Media for helping us throughout the years since 2015 um, put on a great uh, show. Um, and we thank Orca Media for everything. For more information on Orca Media and Able Then On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. Um, and also our podcast will be back uh, on Anchor and Spotify uh, this, um, this year or, and even next year uh, we will be back again with the 
uh, podcast. Uh, we would like to thank everyone um, for uh, a wonderful 2022 with Abel Den on there. Please be safe. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. Have a wonderful holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. And um, uh, we'll see you in 2023. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel de Nonair has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England, Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.